and welcome to this week's edition of A Friday Night In with Lancashire Players. Uh, last week we spoke to Liam Livingston and Saki Mahmood and they reckoned they were the best looking group of lads that have been on this show so far. Well, I have to say, <laughs> my guests this evening certainly top that and they've taken the lead. Sorry, Livy, you won't be very pleased with that, but delighted to welcome Lancashire and England players, Alex Hartley, Kate Cross, and Sophie Eccleston. How are you doing, guys? Everyone okay? Yeah, good, thank you. Good, thanks, Warren. Yeah, good, thanks. You're, you're, you're all looking like 10 weeks of isolation. Of, of sort of, yeah, you're looking all right. You're looking quite fresh, right? quite healthy. A bit of a, bit of a suntan there. Is, is that right? Well, we were all just talking before we need the eyebrow lady back because we're all struggling a little bit. So I'm looking forward to her being reopened. It's different, isn't it? You're the, you're, the, you're the first girls we've we've spoken to now, and 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 one of the topics we, we've chatted about with, between everyone is haircuts. Now we've we've had different people on. Some of them who've shaved it off. Some of them who've who've just let it grow. Some of them who've got headbands in. You know, as as, as girls, as girl players, how have you how have you gone on with 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 looking after your hair? What what have you done, Crossy? You've gone for the you've gone for the the bun up. This is the messy bun, Warren. This is what happens to me every single day in lockdown. That's probably because she's not washed it for two weeks. I washed, not... Sophie, I washed this last night, thank you very much. <laughs> she knew she was coming on, she needed to wash her hair. She did. But, <laughs> seriousness, Warren, the boys now have got an idea of what it's like to play cricket with long hair. Like, they're all wearing the headbands. I've seen Wokes bowling. I saw Jimmy bowling with one today. Like, they've now got a feel of what it's like to play cricket with long hair. You, you know, it's, well, lads, I've had I've had three haircuts in ten weeks. Three haircuts I've had. I've had Sue's my missus. She's gone over it with uh, number seven all over. Perfect. No, no problem whatsoever. It's cost me eight. Cost me eight pounds to get my haircut. So I've saved twenty four quid in ten Why are you weeks. paying your wife to cut your hair? I'm not. I've saved it. <laughs> I don't think I've had three haircuts in ten years, Warren. Let alone ten weeks. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Largely, my last haircut, Crossy did it for me on tour. Yeah, with a pair of physio scissors. Yeah. Do you think, Crossy, you'd normally cut people's hair when we're away. Yeah. Do you remember the mess you made in the bathroom when you did Tim, like Tim, Heather's boyfriend? Oh yeah, Heather's boyfriend. Our captain came on tour and he was looking for a haircut, but we're in the back end of nowhere in India. Yeah. So I thought, I'll do it. Made a right mess of it. He's not been <laughs> back. <laughs> That's that's unbelievable, and and ten week ten weeks into this isolation now, we've not been able to go. We've just started to slacken off a bit, and we've spoken uh, spoken to everyone about new um new new hobbies and new things that we've learned over this uh, over this last period, and we're, we're going to touch on a few. And so we'll start with with you. Uh, you know, you look like you look like you're in the kitchen there. So let's talk about let's talk about cooking and let's talk about new dishes. Have you have you done any cooking yourself? Uh, no, but I've got a new addition to the kitchen. Me and Craig tropical fish. <laughs> You've got tropical fish, or you eat tropical fish? No, we've got tropical fish in our house. Yeah. So, it's been, so I went around to mum's the other day, and I was like, mum, we've got some fish. And she was like, oh, what are you putting that with tonight? And I was like, no, <laughs> no, we've actually bought some fish. She didn't believe me. She's like, you're putting it with some chips. I was like, no. <laughs> so, so what has that got to do with cooking? Nothing. But I'm not, I won't say, I won't set the conversation off cooking because I've not done any. You've not done any bit of cooking. So if I oh, say yeah. Cooking, I cook tea. <laughs> you well, cook that's it. <laughs> Have you made any new teas since you've been in lockdown? No, no it's, been, it's been really boring in our house, apart from the fish. <laughs> Well, she, actually, she actually texted me and Hartley yesterday saying, do we know of any websites that will bring prepared food round to her house? Because she's fed up of having pasta salad for lunchtime. Yeah. <laughs> what are you dealing with here in the kitchen? Well, well come on then. Al, Al you, you speak to me. You must have learned some new skills in the kitchen while you've been off. Yeah, I'm a very boring cook normally. Like, just bang a bit of chicken in the oven. I was going to say freezer. Out the freezer into the oven with a bit of veg. I've made... Chicken katsu curry last week, which was amazing. Wow. And burgers, they weren't that hard to make though, but they were really good. Very, very, yeah, very proud of you. Very proud of you, at least having a go. Crossy, come on, inspire me. You know, if we come down with me, 
the, we invited you all onto the show next week. You've got to have a signature dish. What, what we're talking? I'm not a very good cook, and I've not learned to cook in this, but I did get lumbered with the task of making the family a roast a couple of weeks ago. So my mum does Sunday dinner every Sunday, and she, on a Saturday night, she just said to me and my sister, she was like, right, you two are going to do it tomorrow. So you can imagine panic stations for me, because I'm te literally terrible in the kitchen, and Sunday dinner's a big deal. Massive. Anyway, my, my um, Yorkshire puddings, call me Aunt Bessie, because they were spot. <laughs> <laughs> you text me saying the pressure I have today. <laughs> Honestly, I'm retiring from Yorkshire puddings because they were that good. I'm never going to make better ones. So Did I'm you just take them out of the packet and put them in the oven? Nope, made them from scratch. Mixed it all up, prepared them a couple of hours earlier. The key to it is a good tin. Of water? Okay. You have to put them in water? No, put them in the oven normally. Yeah, like some people put water in the tray. I didn't know if you did them ones. No, so, I didn't. so we're not talking about tropical fish again in water. We're talking about Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> so fish are actually called Yorkshire and pudding, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they were nearly called Crossing Hartley because two of them fight all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and and Crossy and 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 Al, you you've got the you've got the podcast going on. Been going out every week. Really, really successful. You know, some 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 great bands. You must have had great fun doing that. Yeah, we have, and it brings us great pleasure when we go above Yorkshire in the charts as well, and we're like, yes, get in! <laughs> like, honestly, it's become a weekly thing. We're like, are we, were we above Yorkshire? But it's gone really well. There's a bit of a backstory to that, though, wasn't there? Because Tim Bresnan tweeted saying that he, um, he was thinking about starting a podcast, so I replied to him, like, tongue-in-cheek, said, why don't you come on ours, Tim? Like, we've, we've been going for a couple of weeks, so you're welcome to come on mine and Hartley's podcast. And instead, he, he like started up a new one so that he didn't have to come on ours. So he went to the extreme measure of starting up his own podcast. <laughs> and I never heard from him. So now we've got this. I, th I don't think he even knows about this rivalry, but we no. just, we're on it every week, aren't we? Making sure we're above them in the charts. Oh, yeah. Bre Brezzy, he would hate that. And who's the, who's the best guest you've had on? Who, who's been the most fun? <clears throat> <laughs> We've, we've had some good Lancashire players, so we've had So, we've had Glenn Maxwell, we've had Keaton Jennings. For me, my favourite was either Sophie or Heather Knight. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go with Heather Knight. <laughs> I think my favourite was actually Keats because he messed it up so badly that it's going to go down in my memory as the worst, best interview that I've ever had to do. Really? Yeah. yeah. Not like Keaton, that he's 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 right on the right on the button, isn't he? Oh, honestly. So we've recorded this whole episode. It's taken an hour, and we're like, right, thanks, Keats. If you could just email that over to our No Balls podcast email, and he said, oh, Chom, I didn't press record. <laughs> <laughs> so then we had to get we had to get up at six o'clock the next day to do it again, and had to pretend that we'd not heard all the bands before. So like all the laughing was fake, all the stories we'd heard twice. And we're like, keep the God's sake, man, press record. Why did he get up at 6am? Because he wakes up at crazy times, that boy. 6am? <laughs> yeah. I would have never guess. seen 6am. It was horrendous. Oh, I would have gotten the best. There's one 6am in my day. There's one 6am in my day. So, so we'll, we'll come on to you. Have you, um, have you done anything out of the ordering while you've been here? Have you been... Have you taken to social media and learned any dance moves or anything like that? Do you know what? I've actually done nothing. Nothing like that. Okay. I think there's one of our, there's one of our guests that I have seen has taken to TikTok and she's just gone off the screen now. <laughs> but, 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 so not done anything, but, but Al, you've, uh, you've, you've learned some new, uh, some, some new dance moves I've been, I've been seeing. Yeah. Much to Kate's. Joy, she loves it when I do a good old TikTok and I get the dance moves out. <laughs> do you know what it was? Sheer boredom. Like, yeah. I am so bored and so fed up that I, I just stopped. You downloaded TikTok within 24 hours of us going. <laughs> you liar. You are a liar. I can find the messages. You are <laughs> It was 24 hours after Boris told us we had to stay inside. <gasps> Oh, so yeah, I've got TikTok. It's um, I go through phases with it of where, whether or not I'm jumping on the bandwagon or not. 
Oh, good. Well, that's, that's, that's a good effort. And I suppose, you know, we've, we've been chatting now for, what, 15 minutes. We've not even talked about cricket yet. So let's, 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 touch, let's touch on cricket. And so we'll, we'll start with you. You know, before lockdown, you, you, know, you, you rose through the ranks and, you, and I think you ended up the top bowler, didn't you, before we, we went into lockdown. How, uh, how frustrating has it been not being able to get out there on the park and play? Yeah, obviously it's quite annoying not to be able to go and actually play cricket. We came off the World Cup and we obviously got uh, knocked out due to rain. So it's obviously the last game we played was, well, didn't even play. It was obviously quite annoying, but mm. hopefully that's the end of the year. Yeah, and, and, and cricket, cricket's cricket been in your life from, 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 from when? Did you, did you st- what age did you start? I think I was about four or five and my brother and my dad were just like, so if we're going to play cricket today, you're just coming with. <laughs> so I had no choice but to go and watch cricket for nine hours. Yeah. So kind of I know, had no choice. I think that's the lot of us. I think the lot of us have actually been the same as well. And 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 Alex, you you you're a fellow you know fellow fellow spinner, and and you've you've reached the highest level of cricket. You've played for for your country. How how disappointed were you not to uh, to be able to get out there and 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 improve points this year? Yeah, this year was going to be massive for me, having lost my England contract in September mm-hmm. and. The 2021 50 over World Cup was something that I've always wanted to work for since 2017. So incredibly frustrating, but it's equally it's opened up so much more for me, you know, in the commentary stuff. All three of you are, are well into to, to fitness as well. And fitness is a massive part of the game at the moment. Crossy, I know, I know you were, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of uh, lots of stuff going on with the internet of, of training and stuff like that. How have you kept your fitness going? To be honest, that's been the thing that I've found the hardest because normally you know that you're training for matches or you know, you're playing in a week's time and you've got a series coming up. So I think it's been hard to keep motivation going when you don't know when you're next playing cricket. So I've kind of flipped it on, flipped it on its head and thought more about the mental side of it and how much it would help me by staying fit and you know, keeping active. And when we only had that hour to get out of the house, I just thought that was really key to me having a good day. And there were so many times where if I didn't exercise, then I'd end up having a bit of bit of a bad day. And so I kind of learned from that and just thought, actually, cricket's going to come second here, but my mental health will come first. And that's how I'm best going to get through this lockdown. Absolutely. And that's that's first and foremost, you know, as people, we're, we're happy in ourselves. And I actually saw Jenny, your sister, yesterday, and she was, uh, she was doing a bit of training. She actually said she was doing your running for you. So you <laughs> might want to pull her up on that one. And uh, <laughs> she was oh, running for you. Yeah, she was she was flying around Bamford Field as cricket club at one stage when I, when when we saw her. But uh, yeah, it's, it was it's always good to 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 see her. And, and playing for Lancashire, uh, playing for Lancashire Crossy is a uh, is always been a very very important part for you. Yeah, um, I mean it's the main reason that what we can all sit here today as England players really. Um, it's strange though because I was thinking about this just before this call because I wondered what you talked to us about and. Um, like for us, I think playing for Lancashire is probably a whole different kettle of fish to the lads that you've had on this, you know, on the program. Mm. Um, like for us, when we were kids, cricket was always just our hobby and we just loved playing it. And it was it was almost a bit of a, you know, just a bonus that we could play for our county and that Lancashire did have a team. And now the fact that Al sat here talking about getting a contract and Lancashire are going to, you know, pay her professionally as a cricketer. I would never have envisaged that that, could possibly have happened. And I don't want to, I don't, I'm not going to tear up or anything. But, <laughs> All uh, right, Rossi, climb out. <laughs> last year, we got, we got, um, we all got capped. And yep. we've kind of had a running joke for probably the 10 years of, well, the last 10 years of us playing for Lancashire that, you know, the guys get capped and um, Keaton came in and I think he was capped within 12 months of playing for Lancashire. And like, I've been playing for Lancashire for some like 20 years at this point and yep. had any kind of recognition. And like now I can just see that it's all turning on its head. So like Lancashire for us is probably more than it could ever be for some of the guys. And I know that, that might sound, people will probably argue with that, but you know, it's one of the main reasons that we are sat here today earning money. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's, it's fantastic. And it? it's fantastic that those opportunities for you, for you three in particular, who've, who've, who've come through the ranks, you've played for Lancashire and you've gone on to play for England and Sophie, Playing for England is, is as high as it gets. It doesn't get any higher than that. And that must be a, 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 a great feeling for you inside to have, have reached your pinnacle and want to go that step further and play for as long as you can. Yeah, I know it's obviously amazing. Like, it's something you always dream of. Like, you, play, you play cricket with your best mates, really, don't you? It's like, so nice to take to feel people you love and like you're trying to win something. And 
it's obviously quite crazy that I'm 21, it's my job and I get paid to play cricket. It's like surreal sometimes when people are like, you have the best job in the world and I'm like, yeah, I actually do. Like, I do what I love for a living. Yeah. Honestly, it scares me that she's still only 21 because I'm like, how? <laughs> she's played for so long. She's played over 70 games for England already and she's 21. Yeah. So it's... you once told me that playing for Alvinley was the best thing in the world. <laughs> uh, I know, oh, bless them. I do love playing for Alvinley. That's great. That's that's really good to hear because we've all got our own our own clubs and you know we've 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 gone on and we you know we've gone on and, and represented in our country. But Alex, tell me about tell me about touring and tell me about touring <laughs> in different places in the world and and the fun you have and the camaraderie you have and and of course the cricket that you play. Tell me what tell me what it's like. I tell you what, for me and probably for Kate and Eccles as well, we are so lucky because the three of us are such good friends that we get to tour the world together. And me and Crossy kind of gang up on Eccles a little bit and we'll like play play pranks on her and try and like do all these things just to make her look silly. But you know, we are so lucky we get to travel around the world, go to Australia, India, Sri Lanka, you name it, we've been there together with our best mates. And it, it's playing a game that we love and, you know, it's, it's just amazing. It's a feeling that I always want to do, you know, whether it's, whether it's go to La Manga for a training camp, it's still touring with your mates and it's still amazing. And I think about like, you think when you go on tour and it's like, you, you play cricket for, like, you play, what do we train for? Four hours a day, if that, and then like the rest you with you, like with your mates and you just try and stay busy. You go to see parts of the world that you've never seen before, like the Taj Mahal and things like that. You just wouldn't see if you're, just working in an office, so it's quite crazy, really, what you can see. Real, really crazy. And 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 Kate, you know, you you played you played for England for for a long time. You played in most of the continents, most of the countries in the world. In your in your mind, which is the hardest place to play cricket? Um. Oh God. This every continent has got its own reason for why it's difficult. Whether that's you know the weather, the pitches. Um, Sometimes, like in India, the crowds, for example, they come into it and because yeah. they're just mad for it over there. Um, but I think, as a bowler, I think probably Australia is one of the hardest because the, the pitch is just so batter friendly and they're just rock hard. And it's good that there's a bit of pace, obviously, over there for, for me as a seamer, but you don't get as much as you get out of the wickets over here or, you know, maybe in India, places like that. So, um, yeah, I'd probably go Australia, but it's one of my favorite places to go touring. So, yeah, you've all you've all you've all spent a bit of time there, and 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 Alex, if I, if I was to put you on the spot uh, and ask you who was the best women's cricketer in the world at the moment, you need, you know, let's let's discount your England colleagues. Who would you say is the best female cricketer in the world? In me, Elise Perry, without a doubt, she is. So good. And I hate that I've said that. I can't believe I've actually admitted it. But she is just unbelievable. She's an unbelievable trainer. She's a really nice girl. And she's just adapted her game in every way possible in each format to make sure she's the best. Yeah. Oh, and she, is, she, she, is, she, is she dual <laughs> play super as well? Is Sorry, she... I was too busy laughing at Crossy saying climb out. <laughs> She, she just, she's just um, she's she's um, an Australian soccer player as well, and she she she, she, she was yeah. Play. And I think she had to give up playing football to play cricket. Well, unbelievable, Crossy. You've played against a hell of a lot of cricketers in your time, past and present. Who's the best <laughs> you've played with? <laughs> Crossy, you're the oldest on this show. Yeah, Who's your favourite player? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. I don't want to say Elise Perry, but she would be up there. But yeah. the only. In the Ashes last year, Warren, the only way we could get her out was with like horrendously awful bowling, like rank long hops that she'd just nick through to the keeper or something. Really? Bad. Yeah, she's she's just so good at facing good bowling. But I think back in a day, I'd have to say Sarah Taylor. I say back in the day, she only retired last year, but she <laughs> she could do stuff on a cricket pitch that I've not seen many players do, men, like male or female, and she made it so easy, which. I think is probably the like the mark of a genuinely good sports player is how easy they make their trade look. Absolutely, I saw something. Uh, I saw something on on social media the day of the best clips of Sarah Taylor and and some of the work she did. And I think she was described by Adam Gilchrist as the best keeper in the world. She's yeah. the best keeper in the world, male or female, and that is a massive accolade. Yeah. Uh, some of the things she did was was incredible. And as a bowler, she just made 
like my job well she just made me look better than I was because like any, any leg side wide she'd get a stump in from it or something ridiculous so she <laughs> made, it, made it look so easy yeah she's brilliant absolutely pleasure to watch an absolute pleasure to to watch and so you know you, you like you say Al mentioned you were you're 21 you played over 70 games for England who's the best that you've who's the best player you've bowled at I don't know. I think when we go to India and you play against Smithy Mandana, who's obviously the spin, like when we bowl, well, obviously left down spin, it's going into her and she just sweeps me. Like, not many players sweep me, just sweeps me for six over. I'm like, oh, God, here we go again. And it's like brilliant. And then Heather's like, what's your plan, so? And I'm like, I don't know. Not, <laughs> a hammy. not currently got one. <laughs> yeah, Get Hartley on, let her go at 10 instead. <laughs> I think that's, that's quite good actually because when we played that game and I was to bring it back we played the Thunder last year we played where did we play Crossy where was it which game are you talking about so far? <laughs> I'm holding out of my memory <laughs> the one with Lizelle Lee when they were whacking it oh that was the massacre that was the Blackpool massacre yeah that was Warren right we played against Surrey and we oh. played a nine over game and they got 135 <laughs> that's it was I was bowling and Crossy was like so, have you ever bought a wide Yorker? And I was like, no, I've never really tried that. She's like, well, just give it a go. <laughs> everything else has not worked. I was like, right, great. She goes, what do I do? I said, bowl it wide and bowl it full and I'll set the field. <laughs> she got hit for six over <laughs> no, this, is, this is so refreshing because people listening to this will realise that the banter that goes on on a field, whether you're playing the highest level or the lowest level, is exactly the, exactly the same. And sometimes, as professional cricketers, we don't know what to do, do we? We do know not, not oh. know what to do in them situations. I don't care. I remember, I remember Lizelle Lee being like 45, 50, not out, crosses the extra cover, and the ball gets crunched to her, and she can't even see it. She doesn't have time to react, and it hits her straight in the stomach. She drops the catch, and we were like, this is going to be a long nine overs. <laughs> Al, that ball went for four still. It hit me flush in the stomach at extra cover and it went for four at deep extra. That's how hard she hit it. I, th yeah. I think I've still got a mark. We've still got the same mark on my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst day of my life on a cricket field, I think. That's brilliant. Ian Austin, Ian Austin when I played with Ian Austin at his height of his career, so uh, and he played in the, the 40 over competition, whatever it was, the Refuge Cup in the, the 40 over. And, it, and if we were playing against someone good, he'd walk past me and pull his jumper on He'll go seven left, six <laughs> left, five left, <laughs> and he'd count the whole the whole season. season that does. Yeah, we were like that with the games last year. <laughs> <laughs> and that's brilliant. And it just goes to show you that you know you, you're human after all, and whatever whatever um, whatever standard of cricket you're playing is is a. Uh, it, it's exactly the same, and you know you let, let's talk about now. Let's talk about you know what advice would you give to, uh, to to young cricketers women's cricket and women and girls cricket is growing and growing and growing it's getting stronger and stronger uh, the effects of, of watching cricket on TV now are, are showing uh, and and there's lots and lots of uh, uh, young girls out there and ladies who are wanting to wanting to reach the pinnacle and, and emulate what you guys have done Chrissy what would you what would you say to, to young to young players now who are looking to get into the game um I think hard work shows now, you know, it's not as easy as it was to get into the women's side of the game. Like when I was 15, I, I was between netball and cricket for which avenue I was going to go down. And I purely picked cricket because there was less girls playing it, you know, and it'd be an easier option for me to go, and um, you know, go down the cricket route. Um, so yeah, just work hard at it. But I think also have fun while you're doing it. I think that was something that I really missed out on quite a, a big chunk of my career because I was almost taking it too seriously. And putting too much pressure on myself. And as soon as I started freeing myself up a bit and enjoying it and, you know, being that kid again in the back garden that just loved playing cricket, the results started to come through as well. So, like, they're striking a balance, but make sure you're enjoying it because ultimately it's a game at the end of the day. Absolutely. And Al, and Al what, 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 have you got anything to add to that? Yeah, for me, basics. You have to do the boring stuff. If you want to get good at your job or playing cricket and you want to get good at your skill, you have to do the basics and the drills and the boring stuff that makes you better. You have to do that. And exactly the same as Kate, enjoyment. Like I've had 18 months of my England career where I didn't enjoy cricket. And I think enjoy, it makes you a worse player because when you start enjoying it, you start playing better because you're having a laugh with your friends. So they're the two things for me. 
Yeah, and, and Soph, you know, as a relatively young player, um, you know, who's been around for a long time, advice to spinners? Oh, uh, well, I used to start playing ball and seam, so I used to be a seam ball until I was like 14, then I bowled two over spinning in the game, and I was like, right, I'll stick to this. I think it's oh, part of me wishes she was still a seamer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I think it's just keeping it simple. Like, I think everyone knows, I think Crossy and I'll know that I just keep it so simple in what I do. And I just try and do like the basics right like, 10, 10 out of 10 times and just just keep practicing what you do best. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you know, when you, get, when, you, when you get to the end of your careers and when you finish playing cricket and you, you sit down and you take stock of everything you've done from, from being a young player right the way to representing the three Lions, um, it's only then that you, uh, you think, well, you know, I've had a great time. I've had a great career. I've been very, very fortunate to have done what I've done. And if you knew that, if you knew that during your career, I think, God, I've enjoyed it so much more than, than, than having to go out and, and not sleep in the night before. I mean, to, to think I've got to face him or her or I've got to chase eight and over or I've got to keep wicket on a, on, a, on, a, on a Bunsen that's going over my shoulder. But now I think I'd give me high teeth to, to do that again. Yeah, I, I do think that's easier said than done, though. I think especially from our point of view, maybe less so now, but for the last five years, if one of us lost our England contract, you're not a cricketer anymore. You can't go down, you can't drop down and play county cricket. So for us, the pinnacle is England, but it's also the be all and end all. Yeah. So I think now for females coming through, they're going to have more options. So for example, Hartley's lost their England co contract, but now can be contracted through Lancashire. Yeah. So there's almost that pressure gets taken off immediately. Sorry, Al. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just got a knife in my back. Just can you get it out? <laughs> Actually, correct. Come on. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. But yeah, those girls, obviously, that pressure gets taken off them immediately because they don't have that worry of, oh God, I'm going to have to go get a job in a completely different environment because I've lost, lost my England career. Guys, it's been amazing to speak to you. It's been a, you know, it's been a breath of fresh air than them, them, them lads that I've had on talking about, <laughs> talking about moisturising their beards and you know, their gels and stuff like that. It's a, I think that's a real, a real good frank frank uh, discussion we've had some some good fun some good banter amazed about self tr tropical fish I'm, I'm, I'm amazed I'm amazed you can't see them oh, can you not if, they, if they're in the kitchen <laughs> surely, surely where are they, there oh, they are. <laughs> right next to the toaster there so every time you have a piece of toast the water temperature will go up a little bit <laughs> Well, no, that's all right, because I have to pay £40 for a filter for them because we have to have warm water anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make our job a bit easier. <laughs> there you go, they're in the background now. Brilliant. Well, guys, thank you very much for, for taking your time out. I'm going I'm to say it's, you know, fingers crossed we do see a little bit of cricket this year and we do, we do get it back on our screens and you guys actually can get that out there on the green stuff. And, and and show you so you show your skills that you've you've shown. We're very proud uh, at Lancashire Cricket to to call you one of our own, uh, and and we're very very proud that you've uh, you've reached the pinnacle of career. Thank you once again for uh, for giving us your time and joining us on a Friday night in. Thanks, Warren. Yeah.